Hi, I'm Glenda Neaton and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to set up your rotary to use with your laser man laser. Um, I've done quite a lot of work with um, a rotary so um, I thought I'd, I'd give you a tip on how I set up mine and I've helped a few other people set up theirs too. If you're going to use a, a rotary, one of the best things that you can invest in is a digital caliper because you're going to need to know the circumference of things and that's going to be really, really helpful in setting up your rotary. One of the first things you need to know is the circumference of the wheel. So I'm going to test that. Make sure it's on zero and then measure the widest part of the wheel and mine says this is 63 okay now most of them will tell you that they're 67 and this is where a lot of people fall down this one is 63 okay so you need to make sure that you remember that one actually this is 63.83 now that I see that in the light 63.83 so you could say 64. Okay, the next thing you need to know is you need to know the circumference of this gear here. Either of these two will be the same. Plus, you need to know the circumference of the gear in here. Now, I've got this stepping motor out here, so I can show you what I mean. Same as this one. This here. Now, it's best if you can get this inner part not this little see how there's an edge on there it's best if you can get the inner part and without the belt on it okay so you can reach the calipers in there and find the circumference of that one but this one is 18.64 and I should probably have something to write this down on. The next one, and this one is, one is a little bit more tricky, is to get this one, either of those two, the circumference of those. Okay? And you find what that should be. And this one says 36.81. So it's about a ratio of 2. So you divide this larger one by the diameter of this one. So this one was about 18 and this one was about 36, which gives us a ratio of about 2. The next thing that you need is you need the um, driver on your stepping motor which is on the side of your laser so we're going to have to go out to the laser to see that these are your stepping motor drivers here the bottom one is for your y-axis which is the one that we're really interested in and what you really need to see is these little dip switches here now this is really hard to see so the best thing to do is to get your phone in there and take a photo. Now you can see we're only interested in the last couple of those. And if you have a look, there should be the same top and bottom. So we can really take a photo of the settings on the top here. And they should be set the same from the top to the bottom as well. But that's the one that there that we're really interested in. Now you can see mine is up, up, down, up, up. And we're really only interested in the last three or four of those. So we'll have a look at those in a moment. So if you can have a look at what those are set at. So if I can get in there a little bit closer and have a look. My eyes are not as good as they used to be. But I know by looking at the settings on here, when I take a photo of those, and I'll, I'll put that up in a minute, that that tells me that the setting on my stepping motor is set to 5,000. 
and that's important because we need that for the calculations for the pulses per revolution. Okay, so now that we know that our gear ratio is around about two and our uh, stepping motor setting is at a 5,000, we multiply that together and we get 10,000. So that gives us a starting place for our pulses per revolution that we can put into Lightburn or into RDWorks, whichever one that you're using. I'm going to focus on Lightburn because that's what I'm familiar with. Um, it only gives us a starting point, but it's better than stabbing in the dark. Um, and I will show you where we can go from there. Um, and we'll take it from there. The next thing that you need to make sure that you do before you um, put your rotary in is put your bed way, way down. Because the rotary takes up quite a bit of room and you don't want the laser head bumping on that um, on your rotary. So make sure you've got the laser, the bed quite down. You can see that I've got it down so that this black part here is down below this support here on the, the side um, of the rotary, of the, the laser. Now that we've done all our calculations, we're ready to set up our rotary in the laser itself. What I've done is I've taken out all of my blades and the honeycomb. I like to put my rotary down in the bottom left hand corner, simply because um, I hate taking it in and out all the time. And I have a small honeycomb that will fit into this corner here. I like to make sure that the rotary is flush here with the supports on the bed and I get a clamp and I clamp it here. One of these G clamps and I clamp it down so that it doesn't move and I'll do that in a moment. The lead here, I'm going to feed it down here in the bottom of the laser there is a hole through the corner here it's hard for me to get that into the into the camera but in that bottom corner there is a, a little hole it feeds through there and then it comes through out the other side here and then over you will see there's a plug there I've disconnected that, that plug on the right hand end there goes to the white axis but we're going to plug it into this one here that's on the right hand end but I'm not going to do that just yet. Before you have done, you unplug that, you need to make sure that you centre this rail over your um over your rotary so that the laser head is centered over the two wheels. You can see that mine is centered directly over that. You can move your rotary a little bit before you clamp it down, but you, once you've unplugged your Y-axis, you can't move this very easily. I've tried moving it by hand. I just find that's too difficult. It's much easier to get it set up before you turn that off. The next thing we want to do before we turn off, uh, connect up the rotary, is we need to stop the Y axis from wanting to home when you turn it on. And we do that by going to Menu, User Settings, go down to pa Reset para which is reset uh, parameters go across and down to Y on reset and make sure that that says no okay 
and then we need when that says no we can go down to write and write that to the controller and then you can escape from there and then we're good to go turn your controller off and you can then go in and connect up the rotary to the y-axis that I was showing you before okay I have my laptop connected up to the laser so now I'm going to put in the settings so what I need to do here is I'm going to go to edit machine settings and it's going to read it from the controller now it's a good idea before I start changing anything to save that to a file so I can just click on the, the save file and it can write that, write that to somewhere so I'm going to write this as um, I'm going to call this backup to save it somewhere where you know it, it is and save it now if I do anything really weird I can back that up I'm going to scroll down here until it says rotary parameters and that should be on clicked on red like that I've been using my rotary so that's why mine was on green when we did our calculations it says my pulses per rotation should be 10,000 and the diameter here if I can get that to click was 63 point I think it was 85 we'll do it at that and then I need to write that to the controller and it says here controller settings written successfully okay then I can click on OK I can go up here to this little rotary signal here and you can see it's written it in here and it says test now I have found it doesn't always work sometimes it will and sometimes it doesn't so the easiest thing I found to do and it does it reliably to test it is I draw a little rectangle up here and I make it the height now the height when it's talking about height on the rotary that is actually the circumference of a turn so the piece that you're working on that will go around the piece and when it's talking about the width that's the width of, of the so if I was looking at this little um, piece of dowel here the height here will go around the circumference of the dowel and the height the width will be this way on the dowel okay so that was 63.85 is what I want the height to be I'm going to unclick that and I'm going to make my width just 10 okay so that should be a good test and what and I just do that as a frame all right so I'm just going to switch you back over and show you what that does on the rotary you can see I've put two pieces of tape here on my rotary so that I can see that they've lined up I've got this piece here on this black frame this one here is on the wheel and that they line up perfectly so that I can see how much it's going to go around when I press frame on the laptop you can see that that's going far too fast and it's going around more than once I'm going to go back over to my control panel 
and I'm going to press speed and I'm going to slow that down to 20 millimeters per second and I'm going to press enter and now that's going to do that a lot slower so you can see that more easily so I'll try 7,700 right back to the controller try and you just keep trying it until you get it perfect takes a little bit of patience but it's worth it we might try 7650 write that to the controller whoop I've got too many zeros in there I just keep going until I find the right amount. So this time I'm going to try 7,600. Write that to the controller. Try once more. You need it to be absolutely perfect. And once it is, you're set. Now, next time you want to um, take that out, um, you just undo all the things you did. And that little red box on the settings, you just uncheck that so that it disables the rotary and everything else should be fine. And that's it.